Okay, these are the things that come in this great big brown box. By the way, save that brown box in case you have to send it back for any reason. But you get the film, you get the rip, and you get the ink. Okay, once you open this box, the important things in here obviously are the printer and these ink cartridges. These ink cartridges are from Epson. Don't use these. You can keep these for an emergency, but you won't need these for using our rip. You're not going to need this, which is for your CD uh, printing. Really, the only thing you're going to need are these core ends, and these are for our 13 inch rolls of film. And once you put these on the machine, you're set to go. All right, next thing to do, obviously, is all the blue tape is now taken off your printer. The next thing is to put the ink in the printer. Now, you're going to use Accu Ink. I'll show you how to do that. Just raise this lid. You can turn the printer on whenever. Now push this little button here. And you can see all these lights around here. That means they're empty. If you open it up, you can see there's nothing in there. Now it doesn't matter what you start, what color you start with. I'm starting with magenta. Now the key to keep an ink off your fingers is to pull this tab when it's in the printer. I'll show you how to do that. Now this is magenta, so you find where magenta is on here, and it's right there. So I'll put it in the second bay here. Push down, you can hear a little snap. Then you just take this tab and pull it off. You can see there's a little bit of ink on there. If you'd done it the other way, you would have had the ink on your finger. Now what you do is you just continue filling the whole bay up with all the other colors. That's all there is to the setup. Once that's done, you close this up, hit this button, and you're ready to go. Okay, what you have to do next, obviously, is load the film. Now, this film has to go in the printer a certain way. You want the film to go over the top and into the printer. Now, these core ends that, you, that are supplied by Epson go on the back of the printer. Let me just drop that down. And you can see little arrows here. That shows where to load it. So we'll just put this on here. It's sort of tricky to get them on, but once you get them on, get them on. There, it is now on. The other important thing is that this will be relatively straight. And can, as you can see, that's not a real straight cut. So let me touch this. Let's see. Nice straight cut is always a good thing. Other thing you have to do is you see this thing? If this is over here, it won't load. This has to be moved all the way over, like that. You can drop that down. Now you just take the film, put it in the printer, push it until it stops, and it will load all by itself. There, see that? It is now ready to print. Okay, next thing you have to do, obviously, is load the rip. Now this rip software, comes in this box. Has instructions on it, right here. Read the document first, it's always a good idea. And then they got a quick startup guide. When in doubt, always read this. Then you have a CD, Filmmaker version 10. And this little thing here, which is called a dongle. This dongle really is the whole rip. Protect this. If you lose this, you're in trouble. You're going to have to buy a new one, and they're not that cheap. Uh, keep it in a safe place. Matter of fact, keep it plugged into your computer. You don't have to unplug it. If you don't have a dongle, if you, unlo if you download a, uh, uh, the serial number 
uh, keep that written someplace in case you ever have to redo this. So what you do is you put this in your computer, put this in your CD drive, and just follow the instructions. It's that easy. Okay, I obviously have the ripper already on my computer, but I'm going to show you probably one of the more important setups when you first start, and that is when you first put the CD in, it's going to say welcome. That's an important part. All you have to do is follow the next steps. So I'll just hit next. Q type, print film separations. That's what you want. Hit next. Printer. Here's the tricky part. You have to make sure that you've chosen the correct printer. Pick the wrong printer, it's not going to work. Now you've got the Epson Sure Color P400 separations. That's the one you want. You don't want anything else. It has to say Sure Color P400 separations. So you click on that. The port will be that one. Then you hit next. You're using roll media because you put in the 13 inch roll material. Set size is 13 inches. It only comes in 13 inch width. So you hit next. Now the resolution, this is how you want to print it. If you want 1440 or if you want uh, 1440 720 or 720 uh, DPI, whatever you want. Uh, let's just pick one. I'm going to pick the basic 1440-720. And here's the other critical setup. Notice this says single black. You don't want that. You just put an all black uh, AccuInk system in. So you click on multiple black. And here you must check all these cartridges. Hit next you can get rid of this just uncheck that you don't need that hit next here you can put in the name uh, for your queue I, I can call this anything I want I generally when I'm talking to customers I set it up to like test one test two what you can call it whatever you want I'll just keep it at that hit next the printer and queue believe it or not are already set up the next thing you have to do is hit save Okay, now what should pop up, it says the ink density test page. What this is going to do is going to tell you what the proper settings should be for that printer you just set up. Uh, if you notice right here on number three, it says seven. Well, that may or may not be the right number. More than likely when you're first setting up, it's going to say zero, uh, which is fine. What you want to do is hit print test page. Now what should happen is on the right hand side, you should get the uh, uh, some targets populating. There it is. And there you can see it's populating these test targets. And every target, there's a bunch of them here, every target has a number on it. And whatever that number is, uh, once you decide after printing which number looks the best, you put that number right here. Okay, after printing, as you can see, I got my uh, printed targets out, and each target has a number next to it, as you can see here. Now, some of these targets, if you look, they're really wet. I mean, to the point where it's, it can literally drip. That's obviously is way too much ink. You don't want to use that one. So obviously, on this one, you wouldn't use number 27. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even use number 25, because that's still wet. But if you look here, at number 16, that looks pretty good. The black is nice and dense. You got, you're still holding all the resolution. Everything prints good. I would pick, pick, uh, pick number 16. Number 16 is the one I'd use. So that number now will translate over here on the ink density test page. What you do in number three is you put in 16. Click done. That's it.